This use of play is brought to you by Grab somebody and tell them hello Welcome to the Barbados Today Afternoon Update for Tuesday, October 13th. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Thanks for joining us. Lawmen are investigating a suspected suicide in Blackrock, St. Michael. According to police public relations officer, acting assistant superintendent of police, David Welch, the body of 49-year-old Reginald Young was found hanging in the bathroom of his Carlington Terrace, St. Stephen's home, at around 7.40 a.m. He was found by his wife. Police are treating his death as unnatural at this time. The Ministry of Education will in the coming months equip students with the necessary instruments outlining their rights and privileges. Word of this from Education Minister Ronald Jones, who revealed that he will soon be engaging local education partners about setting up a student charter. Jones told the media following the opening of a youth conference this morning, that the voices and rights of young people are not being articulated clearly enough, especially given the social ills plaguing the country, and the proposed charter will seek to address that gap. I mean, over time, we've had so many complaints, parents, from some teachers, from students themselves, um, even students who have left school who believe that they might have been disadvantaged that they never had an opportunity to truly and genuinely defend themselves when let's say a charge or a complaint is brought against them. And a, a charter which is embedded within our codes, um, like code meaning some of the education regulations or something like that, or another segment um, added to, 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 to that body of information which guides how, how people interact in the school system can become relevant. The majority of businesses in the city are following fire prevention codes, so says Chief Fire Officer Errol Maynard, following a walkthrough in Swan Street this morning. Businesses were inspected to ensure that they had the necessary prevention equipment and exit, but, fire, but Officer Maynard says some businesses are still lagging behind. We still have a few that we need to work with. It's not a case we recognize that in some cases it's an expensive endeavor to rectify. Some of the businesses do not have the capacity to create an alternative exit. So we are working with them to put in compensatory factors that would compensate for the fact that they don't have an alternative exit. So I guess I would say that many of them are complex. I assume that you are the fire prevention officers make regular trips to this district. Yes, they've been working in this area for the last couple of weeks. That is why they were able to identify the ones which had things in place and the ones which do not. A major facelift of the river bus terminal is on the way. Transport Minister Michael Lashley says the $1.5 million project is the first phase of a complete redevelopment of the area. Renovations are being made to the ground floor of the building known as the Railway Building located to the south of the Ministry of Education. It will house a commuter waiting area with seating, covered access to buses, a police post, public toilets, advertising space, and an information center. There will also be improved lighting. Lashley says the project is part of a plan to create a safer environment for commuters and operators. Barbados and the rest of its CARICOM neighbors are being urged to provide the investments required to improve the production of statistics. The call from CARICOM Secretary General Ambassador Irwin LaRock as the region gets ready to celebrate Caribbean Statistics Day on Thursday. In a message to mark the occasion, which is being held under the theme Better Data, Better Lives, Ambassador LaRock said the investment is necessary to improve the production of statistics to support and guide the sustained economic and social development of the community. He lauded the work of those in the field, but says there is still critical data gaps that needed to be filled, as well as issues of communication with respect to the availability and use 
of statistics. In sports, can the world's fastest man run any faster? Well, Usain Bolt wants to break his own 200-meter world record. As he opened training for the 2016 season in Jamaica yesterday, Bolt says there's a lot more left in his tank, and he really wants to run under 19 seconds. He's confident he can do it, and he says he has the support of his coach, Glenn Mills, so he'll be putting in all the work. Bull says he's looking forward to the Olympics, and he won't be settling for anything less than go in the 100 and 200 meters. There's regional and international news after this short break. The developments from the Caribbean, St. Lucia's top trade union body is getting ready to hold round two of talks with the government on wage negotiations. More in this report from Alison Kentish of HTS News Force. Wage negotiations remain a grey area for the CSA. However, Pierce seems optimistic that the two sides can reach a conclusion that will work in the interest of the government of St. Lucia and public servants. What we have decided to do is to partner with government in, in terms of having a, a national economic and social partnership with government. So what we have been doing is going around having discussions with our members. We were in the South on Friday and today we with the, the Ministry of Health, Victoria Hospital, and later we're going to the Ministry of Agriculture. Coming out of his meeting with the public servants, Pierre says a main concern is the inability to own their own home. He suggests government waive land and house taxes for a period of five years. Pierre says the CSA will include this suggestion in a proposal that is due for presentation to the government by Friday, October 16, 2015. We are ready. We have done our homework and we are waiting to engage the government. On the world scene, more than a year after Malaysian flight... MH17 crashed over Ukraine, the Dutch safety board confirms that a Russian-made missile brought down the aircraft. 298 people perished in the July 2014 disaster. The chairman of the Dutch safety board pre presented the findings to the victims' relatives. Flight MH17 crashed because of a 9N314M warhead detonated outside the aeroplane above the left side of the cockpit. This warhead fits the kind of missile that is installed on the Buk surface-to-air missile system. As a result of the warhead's detonation, thousands of small preformed metal objects were ejected with tremendous force. Many of these objects were bow-tie-shaped or cubic. Several hundreds of them hit the aeroplane. The impact killed the three crew members present in the cockpit at that moment and caused structural damage to the forward part of the aeroplane. As a result of the detonation, the forward section of the aeroplane broke off, after which the aeroplane broke up in the air. The tail section probably crashed before the center section. This center section, which also contained the engines, hit the ground upside down and caught fire. The breakup resulted in a wreckage area of about 15, 50 square kilometers. And on that note, we come to the end of our afternoon update. But for the very latest, log on to www.pabidistudy.bb. Subscribe to our e-paper, our email updates, and like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals. Or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 101 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. There you can get all the latest news and sports. And don't forget to join us again this evening for another update. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Good afternoon.